Hello everyone and welcome back to Kobean History. In today's video we will be talking about Smiths. Now Smiths are quite a diverse range of professions because you could say yeah he's a Smith but then you wouldn't exactly know what they would make because Smith can refer to quite a large range of professions in the metalworking industry. So that's why I'm not gonna do one specific video on Smith in general, but I'm gonna split it up into different videos going into more detail of specific types of Smiths. Because this profession is so vast, you could split it up into different families which could then be split up into different professions still. Smith might be one of the most diverse types of professions that there is. And you can see that with last names. The most common English surname is Smith. So in this video I will cover the wider Smith profession families in which you could subdivide the profession. And more specifically the subdivisions of Smiths that have to do with a color in their name. For example, Blacksmith, Whitesmith, Redsmith, Brownsmith. But first, I'll cover the meaning of the general smith. So since the earliest times of metallurgy, the smith has been a very important person in a society. And thus, the word smith has a very ancient origin as well. I will put the etymology of it on screen right now. And as you can see, we can date the origins of the word smith in English all the way back to Proto-Germanic. Again, showing that this profession has been around for a really long time. You can divide smiths into different families of professions in different ways, but the most common, which we will cover today, is splitting it up according to which materials they used. For example, the blacksmith is probably the most common smith, and when you say smith you'd probably think of a blacksmith. I might also hear sometimes the term ironsmith, which is a synonym for blacksmith. And that's because blacksmiths work with metals such as iron and steel, which are quite common. Blacksmiths make items from horseshoes to buckles to even weapons and tools. And the black into blacksmith's name is because iron was formerly sometimes called black metal as well. Now the black in black metal could refer to the black fire scale, which forms a layer on the surface of iron items when they're heated in a forge. Another type of smith are the white smiths. Now white smiths can refer to two types of smiths, both referred to as white smiths. The first I will cover is the later one of the two, which only developed around the late 1600s and is actually a subdivision of a blacksmith. The white smith, in this sense of the word, would be a person who would take over part of the finishing job of the blacksmith. For example, once the blacksmith had finished forging the item in the forge, the whitesmith would then take it over and finish the object. For example, if it's an axe, he would sharpen it to make the metal shiny and get rid of that black fire scale, hence the term whitesmith. It's worth noting that these tasks could also be undertaken by the blacksmith, and the whitesmith would refer to a worker who would specifically do these tasks and not do much of the heavy forging. And as mentioned before, this only came into being in the late 1600s, so in the Middle Ages this would all be the task of the blacksmith. This term of whitesmith would later also develop even further to metal workers who don't necessarily use a forge that much, and would more often use techniques such as cold forming where you bend the metal mostly at room temperature, even though they sometimes use the forge as well, but not as much as blacksmiths. They'd also work their metal mostly through smaller tools, such as filing the metal or using a turning table similar to wood turners. These types of whitesmiths would also create finer objects of metal, such as keys for locks, or they could also focus on creating delicate tools, such as carpeting tools, which could have a specific and delicate design. They would also do things such as carving designs into metal objects or sharpening old metal tools. Now the second definition of a whitesmith is the one that's more relevant for this video. Because these whitesmiths that I will cover now are separate from the blacksmiths. And they were also around before that subdivision of blacksmiths became known as whitesmiths. 
These whitesmiths got their name because of the metals they worked with. They worked with lighter colored metals, such as tin, silver, lead, pewter. So these people would make items out of those kinds of metal, for example cutlery or cups or plates, things like that. Whitesmiths were also sometimes referred to as brightsmiths, because these metals they worked with tended to have brighter colors than the metals used by other types of smiths. Later on this term for whitesmith would also be subdivided when they became more specialized. For example a tinker or a tinsmith would work with tin, a pewterer would work specifically with pewter, a silversmith with silver and so on. It is worth mentioning that in the middle ages a person who would use silver as in making jewelry would often be considered a goldsmith because the term goldsmith would have referred to someone who made items out of gold but also worked with other precious metals such as silver. Next up in our colors of smiths we have the brown smith who would work with brass or copper because the colors of these metals have a brown tinge to it. So a brown smith just refers to a copper smith, someone working with copper and copper alloys. Red smith can also be used for this profession, but the term red smith can also be further defined as being a tinsmith who uses tinsmithing tools and techniques to work in copper and copper alloys. So coppersmiths, they got two different colors, brown and red, referring to them. But there might even be a third, because there is also a term named greensmith, which is also thought to refer to a coppersmith, because oxidized copper has a green color. A greensmith could also be someone working in lead, but as far as I could find that might just be speculation. So those were the differences between all the subdivisions of smiths, with colors in their name, and what they worked with. In the future I'll also do more in-depth videos on all of these professions, because of course they can be split up again into more defined professions, for example a farrier who would be a blacksmith but specializing in horseshoes. And there's also other subdivisions of smiths that don't have to do anything with the colors, for example weapon and armor smiths is also a whole subdivision by itself. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the different kinds of smiths. And if you're interested in different medieval professions, you can check out the playlist on screen right now. Or if you're interested in history in general, you can check out my channel to find a wider variety of historical topics. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.